Hello everybody, uh, welcome to today's stream about Last Days of Old Earth, the upcoming game from Slytherin and Auroch Digital. Um, I'm joined on the line by Peter from Auroch, who's the producer over there. Hello Peter. Hello, that is me. Cool. Um, so what we're going to show today is a quick look at, around the game and we're going to do it in, via the skirmish mode, yes. which is uh, the main single player version that's going to be available at early access when the game becomes available on the 3rd of March. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is our kind of our main screen. Peter, do you want to tell us a bit about the kit, what we're seeing here? What's this setting? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, uh, we are, so obviously you launch into the, the touch screen. This is what you're going to land on. Um, we are showing this. This is the sort of frozen landscape. You can see a couple of the human faction in the foreground looking off into the distance. Uh, this Last Days of Old Earth is a... But it's a cold, barren environment, and it, the story is about a group of humans who are effectively trying to survive uh, against all odds from a dying sun. The sun's gradually becoming colder. Yes. Um, so we've, we've gone we've gone against the I think, common science. If the sun is not exploding, someone has done something else horrible to it. Let's yeah, make it yeah. lose so, power. So there's, 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 there's a reason. We're, so yeah. obviously we are going to be bringing in a uh, campaign mode, which is going to be uh, later on in early access, which that's where we really want to start talking about how all of the narrative works and all that sort of stuff. But um, I, I know, for example, that um, some of your forums... Uh, some very clever scientific people have been saying, oh, actually, I think you'll find that when the sun begins to die, it actually becomes hotter. That's absolutely true if the sun dies from natural causes. Yes, is... but this is our game, and this is how the game dies in this game. Absolutely. So yes. things are becoming colder, and the sky watchers, who are the human beings, are trying to edge ever closer towards the equator to try and find uh, life and land that will allow them to grow crops, live out their lives in peace, and so on. Um, yeah, cool. so, so, so let's get going. Let's, yeah, let's let's do it. Okay, so we're going into skirmish mode. Yes, we're going to go with the small map. To we are yes. Medium uh, and large. Yes. Small, and large. Yes. small, medium, and large. Yes, large maps. Yeah, large uh, and I think we'll throw some abundant resources in those to get a bit more interest. Oh yeah, and it will mean that we we really get uh, things going really fast as well. So obviously the game was uh, has taken lots of inspirations from lots of different places. One of the sort of early places that we were inspired by was Armageddon Empire. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's got a real rhythm and a pace to it. You know, I think I think it's fair of me to say that, you know, that's the kind of game. There are other games like it that are quite slow going to begin with. Yep. Um, so ours has got some of that sort of nice rhythm to it to begin with. Um, but obviously things things do pick up. It's not it's not quite as slow and uh, uh, yeah. as that game. But yeah, yeah it's a much more battle focused I find. I, oh, yeah. absolutely, definitely. Yeah. So there's two factions of the game. So you, players can choose to play as either of them, either of the Sky Watchers, who are our human remnant, who are mm -hmm. kind of the everyman's based based on humans and tanks and that sort of thing. Then you have our Automata, who are the technically the antagonists, but they're just going about doing their business, really. There's yeah, no, they're, they're not they're, evil, per se. They're not, they are, you're right, they are the antagonists, but they're not bad guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, and, and again, we'll explore that a little bit more in, in yes. the campaign, but yeah. Uh, cool. But very different factions play, play really quite differently. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's get going, then. So, let's go launch the game. So, it's quick loading times, I like. Good work, sir. Yeah. Um, so, this is the first scene, thing you see every turn of the game. This is our initiative role. So this is, again, it's a direct come over from Armageddon Empires, I think. Ever. So at the start of each turn, you you don't necessarily know who's going to go first, nor yeah. do you know who's going to get the most action points for that turn. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, each sort of turn, I suppose, is, is indicated by rounds. So you have a round and there are turns within that. So, uh, you know, you might go first, your opponent might go first. Um, but yeah, it's all set within this round. And once you've both had a turn, then you move on to the next round. Initiative is really important because obviously uh, you get more AP action mm -hmm. points. Um, you get 12 if you go first. You get 8 if you go second. And action points allow you to, believe it or not, uh, do actions. Yes. And um, yeah, so uh, I mean, you're going to obviously I've, you've got... This one, yeah. I've, I've, I've lost this one, sadly. But there you go. So the AI gets to go first with 12 action points. And I've only got eight item action points to play yeah. roll with. But that's fine. Uh, each of these is a, basically a coin flip dice. Um, mm -hmm. So it's each equal odds, but you can buy more dice. To go yeah, so you can spend your resources. We'll talk about resources in a moment. But yeah. basically, we, you know, you'll know, you suck resources out of the ground, mm -hmm. and then uh, you'll be able to use those to either purchase, purchase cool. units or, or whatever, or spend them on the initiative. So here we have basically out of the game. So 
as saying we've got eight action points up here, so you got eight of these because I came second mm -hmm. in the dice roll. Then you have uh, three resources: your materials, population, and energy. And, uh, and then also a resource surplus, which we'll come back to later. Yes. So you start off with a certain amount, and then you're, I'm currently getting plus one a turn from my clan home, which is here, which mm -hmm. has basically generates one each turn. Uh, it's basically tied me by as I go out and find something more yeah, things absolutely. to find. Absolutely, like one of the one of the things that sort of beginner players we find uh, they do is they they sit back in the clan home and they go, oh, okay, I'm I'm going to sit here because I've got a nice small amount of resources. But actually, what you want to do is get your units together mm -hmm. and go out and explore and find more resources because the resources really are to be like super early on in the game and sort of early to mid game are really 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 important. Uh, like super crucial for you getting the advantage, you know. If you if you can go out and find resources really quickly, you can just dominate the opponent, your yep. opponent quickly. If they just sit at home and kind yep. of, you know, make tea. So this is, you start the game with your base and with your first unit. Um, see, a pretty little guy here. The the nice bit is that these are absolved Serb skirmishers who are yep. kind of bottom of the line infantry support guys. These are your, very much your grunts of this type of army, I think. Yeah, these are dudes who... So the, the Skywatchers, they don't like going into battle. There's only a few of them left, and their rituals and their cultures... You know, this is a far future society that's kind of degraded a little bit. Mm -hmm. Their rituals and their cultures, they don't actually like war, but they have to do it. Yep. And um, so they get their, you know, their criminals, their, the, the people that they want to lock away, and they, they, they push them into the ability to rejoin their society as part of the absolved <laughs> Uh, so it's kind of How like lucky. Greek and Roman themes, I suppose, yeah. there as well. Yeah. So these, uh, the nice thing is your army also is indicated by the units that are in it. So these, the, mm. they, so you see absolved here. So they've got two movement points as indicated by their card. So they have two move, and it costs you two AP to move a unit of this size, which goes up uh, depending on how size the army is. So I'm going to send these guys over here to do the exploring first. Very nice. Oh, who, who have we got in the chat now? Okay, so we've got Shifty Axel in the chat. Hello. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've also got Thurlin, uh, yeah. who says fast dice rolling. So I'm going to get an Empire's years to get there. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. We've, we've got fast dice rolling in there. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, hello to you and yep. uh, to everybody else who's in the chat at the moment. So do say hello. So the other so, key difference, again, which comes up from our Empires, but is still quite a standout bit, is that your units yeah. aren't made by anything. You don't really have a factory. You have a deck of cards. Yeah, that's correct. So um, obviously in the bottom right-hand corner, you've got your deck of cards. Um, you will... Uh, to begin with, in Early Access, we're going to be giving you sets, decks to begin with. We've balanced them really nicely so that there's some really fun things that you can do. But throughout Early Access, we're going to give you a deck builder, and that's going to allow people to actually make their own deck. So imagine with collectible card games or maybe a living card game, something along those lines where you're actually making a deck, you're sitting at home going, hmm, how am I going to figure this sort of stuff out? That transposed into a strategy game setting whereby... You know, you've got to figure out what your tactic's going to be beforehand in a match, yep. but you don't quite know when everything's going to come out. So I've actually got quite a nice spread starting hand here of five cards. Yes. So I've got, I've got a hero here who's a, a L Adar the Twice card, who's yeah. a re reasonably re easy to get out, but mm -hmm. also has a very good command rating. They have our Outlet Rider Rollers, who are sort of a fast, uh, mobile heavy units. Mm -hmm. uh, some Wormbane Huskies, who are quite a good frontline heavy infantry troop. Definitely. Some more skirmishers and a, for, and a tank. Oh, a Steel Tusk tank, which comes nice. with a few skills of deals more damage to heavy targets rather than infantry, and also can do a uh, big old alpha assault to try and mm -hmm. knock someone out early doors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the you know, Steel Tusks, for example, what I really like to do with mine is, with some of my armies, is when I go into combat, I'll actually have a few Steel Tusks together because they kind of. They work with one another really, really well. There's a, a really great sort of um, synergy that works with them, and they are absolutely unstoppable uh, against you know infantry units and, and that kind of thing in an opposing army. Yeah. If you're going up against the right infantry units, I should say, there's always checks and balances to everything. Uh, the key thing, though, is uh, the hero units. These are the important guys, um, because mainly because they all come with this builder uh, skill which uh, other armies don't, so they can actually go out and build structures on the world map and expand your influence across the map. Yeah. So I'm going to start with him. Okay. He's got to go up, drag him into my clan home, just drag him in, summons him. Uh, so if we open up, he goes straight into the garrison, uh, which is every every building has a garrison, so people can defend, and they also get a defensive bonus if they're in the garrison, is that right? Uh, that's correct, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but I don't want him in a garrison. I want him out there roaming the plains. Absolutely. So I'm going to create an army with him, which again takes a bit of effort. It takes two AP. Yep. So obviously, obviously, you were talking about defensive bonuses and yep. that kind of stuff. Different tiles will have different abilities and adore different buffs. I suppose I should say uh, different effects. So one of the really interesting things is when you go into like a forest. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it hides your unit from your opponent. So uh, one of my absolute favourite, uh, one of my absolute favourite bits of feedback that we ever, have ever received is that um, is that people were sort of like hanging out by their base and not really knowing where the where the AI was, and they, then they went off and exploring and that kind of thing. And they were like, "Well, AI's not really come after me yet, so I'm going to go out and just absolutely go for them." And it turns out they were hiding in a forest right next to their base, wandered in, took it. It's, 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 it's forests are scary things. Really scary things. Yep. Like uh, you can really easily get murked. So the key thing is, I want to get these guys out in the field, but I don't have enough AP. Cost you cost you two AP to move a move an army by default, and I only have yes. one left. And I don't have any cards or actions I can do with one. But the key thing is here that AP that AP is not lost; it goes into your resource surplus. Yes. So okay. if I click and turn, uh, that's gone in there. And if I get ten of those, I get a free resource of my choice. Mm -hmm. Which actually I think is like nice. Gives you a little bit of a over the top, a bit of excess uh, resource yeah, it's, later it's on. It's really nice because obviously we're talking about you know re using resources and, and how important they can be. You know, if if you think, well, I can't really make any actions here. There's not really anything that I want to do. It's not, you know, I, I'm kind of happy with where my outposts are at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm sucking up all the resources. You know, you can go right. I'm going to end my turn. I'm going to get an extra one of these points, and then maybe that'll be the extra point of resource that you want to bring out. You know, a special card. Yeah. So start your turn. I won it this time, so I've got 12 action points. So I'm going to take Twitch Team Alpha out there and go and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the uh, Biker Boys with me. Absolutely, you do that. So, uh, how, uh, so we've also got Lodger Strike. Lodger Strike, that's a great name. Uh, in the in the Twitch chat, who asks, uh, will players be able to control domains and invade other players' domains, or will it be arena type matches? Um, it's going to be arena type matches. Uh, so, uh, basically, you know, it's you going into an, a, a match with an opponent. At the moment, we've uh, are playing in skirmish, but we yep. will be launching with multiplayer as well. Which actually uh, just came out today. Which yes, so for the beta uh, beta testers. For beta testers, yes, absolutely. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna quickly flag that up, saying, "Go there, people. Sign up for the beta <laughs> test. Get in there." <laughs> You're totally on brand, then. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Um, so yeah, you can uh, go sign up for that and uh, see where it's at at the moment. And obviously, um, because we're launching into early access, one of the really fascinating things that we can do with early access is, you know, we don't want to just treat it as, you know, like. We don't want to just like put it out into early access because we can do that. What we want to do is we're putting it out there because we want to give you a big full product right to begin with. We want you to have a fun game to begin with. Yep. But we want to be able to get feedback from the community. And we can do that with early access because it means that people can get in touch with us and say, oh, actually, we'd really like to see this element. Yep. And we'll take into account all of that feedback. We can move the game forward uh, in that capacity. So yep. yeah, um, so if you do ever have any suggestions or anything like that, just basically visit, go and visit our store page on Steam at the moment. Get involved, hit it, chuck it onto your wish list, grab it on early access, and then become a yep. part of the, you know, become a part of the community. So I think you were saying also against the logic strike about arenas. You can see here the sort of border around this particular map. Mm. So I started yep. at the bottom left. Um, the AI is somewhere out here. Mm. I'm not sure where he is yet. I have to go and find him. Um, but then there's also a couple of other things of interest on the map. These guys here, which are encounters, indicates mm -hmm. by our glowing pillars here. Yes. Now, Twitch Team Alpha can't reach the, this year, this turn, but our Grey Eagle Desfile can. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go and see what we've got okay. sat around. This could be anything. Mm -hmm. So, it? the Delver camp is thronged with activity, with Ooh. rumbling exoskeleton rigs and with arc lights that shame the sun. Well, the sun's going down, so it's not odd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we want to finish our excavations before the long twilight sets in at this latitude, says the capo, but we need help. So I have a choice here, basically. Um, I can give them four of my population points, of which I only have four, and they'll give me an outpost. Now, to be honest, I don't really want an outpost there, because it's right at the bottom of the map. So yeah. I'm going to choose to completely ignore them, and they can keep digging to the heart's content. Yep, they can do whatever they want. Cool. Um, and again, we're down to 1 AP. Um, mm. So I've got nothing else to cast. I did a bit of drawing whilst you weren't paying attention. Got some nice, more heavy infantry and a new hero as well. Okay. So I'll give the AI a go, see what it does. Mm -hmm. Can't see. It's all in the first shot fog of war. So let's have another roll. Ah, it's, yes, another victory. Nice like one. That. So, right, I'm going to take our Twitch team alpha up to the edge of our supply boundary. 
-hmm. And this is another the other thing that uh, it just carried over from Armageddon Empires, and is quite a key thing here is the concept of supply in these games. As yeah, absolutely. Each of your buildings provides a supply area around it. If you go out of that supply, you'll be at severe disadvantage in any combats later. Agreed. So they'll, you know, you'll, you know, you'll really, really struggle with combat effectively if you're outside of that supply range. But one of the really interesting things is that, you know, you can build an outpost whilst you are outside of that. So if you're thinking, well, you know, I, I don't want to use the resources to build an outpost right now because I'm still within the perimeters of my supply. If you then move outside of that range of supply, yes, you are opening yourself up to attack. But if you know that, or if you think that you can get maybe a turn or two's worth of time to build another outpost, you can move slightly further out and it makes that purchase of an outpost effectively more well, more efficient. Mm -hmm. And also the key thing of outposts is that they're also the only other place other than your base where you can deploy units to. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, Logistrike and Thurlin are asking questions about the cards, and they're right, is that you, uh, yes, all of the cards that are available will be unlocked from the start, and then as we go through early access and add new cards with new skills, yep. they'll become available for you to use as you wish. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so uh, the, the the campaign, the way that we're, you know, the way that we're, we're pushing forward with that one at the moment is, uh, and obviously that'll be something that comes a little bit later, you know, we're going to be giving you set decks and that kind of stuff, and we'll be working out had the, the puzzle of getting through these mm. strategy elements. Um, but basically, as we add cards into the game, they will be automatically added to uh, you know to uh, a, a big ream of options yeah. that you can create. It's actually a player stockpile. We're not, we're not hiding it behind anything no. or anything like that. No, it's, it's a very, very much a purchase once, play, play forever game. Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually decided to go and build that outpost because what I saw in the distance was this here. Uh, which is a seems to be the remainder of a road with importantly a resource on it. Yes. So these are key things because your base in this game produces one of each, mm -hmm. and if you go out into the wilderness and find these guys and build collectors on them, then you can have a, the important advantage of getting more per turn. Yeah. So something is... like these guys, which need yeah. four power, you really need to start saving up for otherwise. Agreed. And obviously you can convert some of your additional, you know, leftover uh, AP into one of those. But you're completely right. You know, it's it's a case of going out, grabbing those resources, and making sure that you hold on to them. Yeah, you know, we don't have a concept of you know a rush kind mm. of a game. There's mm. no there's no concept of just you know spamming out units and uh, you know hoping that you can overwhelm it with that that kind of majority early on. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is a okay. I'm going to think about this and and how I'm actually going to approach this landscape and getting through it that kind of thing. Yep. And also importantly, and it's quite relevant, is that uh, outposts take a turn to build, and they only build at the start of your turn, which mm -hmm. is a very key thing for um, if, you, if say, the opponent won the initiative roll next turn, my outpost wouldn't be built by the time it was their turn, mm -hmm. which can leave lots of people out of supply and is a very cunning trick if you mm -hmm. can take people's outposts for, from underneath them before their turn starts. Yeah, it is brutal and th and th again that's that's why that resource stuff is really important because if you see somebody who's you know maybe you end your turn uh, and you have the first go and then you know your opponent comes uh, comes towards you and ends their ends that round and they're right next to you mm. you're pretty much guaranteed that they are about to try and you know if they're not going to build anything that turn they are probably going to throw as many resources as they possibly can at getting the initiative because they've got additional uh, you know, additional action points with which they can actually come after you, but also, more importantly, you know, they can just swoop in yep. straight away, and there's nothing that you're going to be able to, you know, you're going to be able to defend yourself, obviously, but there's nothing that you can do uh, outside of that. Cool. Yep, so I built this outpost next turn, it's built now. Um, I'm cool. I've actually put a bit of garrison in there just in case someone sneaks around the back of me. Yes. Um, and then I, but I'm also going to add a few, another unit to here to give, to give myself a bit more support. Um, Thurlund had asked whether building the outpost close to the energy resource would be a better idea, even if you have a guard of your supply range first. Mm. And it's, it's a good point. I chose to go there because I was I actually also care about the other uh, supply range outstanding. And also, here's the important bit, is that uh, collectors to provide supply range as well. A less yes. supply range, but they do apply to provide supply as well. Yeah, they do. They do. I mean, so collectors are uh, they're a double-edged sword in that way, because obviously they 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 give a bit of supply and that's obviously really really useful um but one of the things that they don't do is they won't allow you to actually add units to them straight away yep so it's only outposts uh you know 
in early access that you're going to be able to immediately chuck units to, except that there is one. Uh, there's uh, there's a couple of the tricks the automata yeah. can pull off, but yeah, there's a couple. Of, I think there's a couple of units that mm. will allow you to basically deploy to wherever. But but uh, aside from that, yeah, you're really going to have to think about this stuff. So you know, you might think, oh well, what I'll do is is I'll spread out my outpost really thinly, and it'll just you know have it so that the supply range just about covers everything. And you think, okay, maybe that will work out really well. Mm. And it can, it can certainly work out really well. But if somebody gets in there and destroys that outpost, then at some point you've got two massive, sp you know, you've got a massive space between two outposts. Mm -hmm. And can you move those units between those things? You know, if you want to move some units that are, that are in one outpost and you want to get to another one, is that going to be worthwhile, or are you going to be stuck in the middle and, uh, you yeah. know, uh, out of supply? So my plan for here is a Twitch team alpha is going to build a, re a collector next turn. I needed I needed three AP. I only had two, uh, so I've instead decided to draw a card. And yes. I've got uh, some Iron John, who I particularly like. I'm a very much a fan of infantry. So yeah. um, having an APC is always and always nice for me. Very um, nice. Um, Thurl Thurlan has asked, uh, are all the cards units? So okay, so to begin with, yes. And uh, heroes. Uh, and heroes. Of yes. Yeah. So so there's the concept of heroes, which are. Uh, heroes allow you to build things. Heroes allow allow you to have uh, fate within combat, which we'll, we'll, we'll come up against in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, they also uh, you know, buff the uh, armies that are actually within. And then, yeah, there are units as well, and those are attacking units. They actually participate in the combat themselves, uh, and they again they have special abilities too. Now, what we will be adding uh, a little bit later on uh, into early access is um, a, a series of uh, what we're sort of broadly calling facilities. Now, these mm. will be Things that you'll be able to add to buildings. Yes, those are also going to be cards yep. as well. Um, and when you know, when we say units, I mean we really are stretching from literally like the smallest of foot soldier, mm -hmm. uh, or you know even beyond, you know even smaller than that. Really, we've got these really interesting things with the uh, the automata called the uh, the neobots. Mm. <laughs> they are. Well, we might they, see some they, later. We will see some later. Yes, yes, they are very small, but never underestimate. So actually, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to bring up the wonderful infographic that we, uh, our team, produced um, a few okay. weeks ago, um, which gives you a kind of a general overview of what the, what we're going for. Is mm -hmm. that yes, early access, third uh, of March. Yeah. Uh, then the next from that will be the stealth update, adding new units, new heroes, and some of the buildings. Uh, to basically allow people, allow units to hide themselves, to units to go and assassinate heroes, and all sorts of other clandestine of generally oh, nasty oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like oh, some of the stealth stuff is really, really vicious. Yes, as yeah. it's certainly this kind of thing. At the moment in this game, I've got no garrison in my clan home because I I can see everything, anyone coming. I'm not mm -hmm. any threat. However, once stealth comes in, you start have to worry about getting your garrisons up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and again, that's one of the things that one of the really beautiful things that we can do with early access. So, once people get in on the ground floor with with Last Days of Old Earth, you know, from the beginning, obviously you've got a big full game, you'll love it, you'll enjoy it, uh, you'll get a bunch of hours out of it. But as we add these additional elements, um, again, like you know, to you know, this is a full-on strategy game, but think of it as you know, uh, expanding out the gameplay in, in slightly different ways so that. When we the the aim is that when we bring in a new element, say for example, um, you know we bring in stealth, mm -hmm. the tactics that you you know rely on in the first one, some of those tactics just they then you know first of all they're going to be known by your opponents, and second of all they're going to be able to be subverted because there's mm -hmm. new new um, you know new ways of moving through uh, these sorts of situations. It's you know it's the same with, with the other elements that be coming yep. in as well. And I, I, whilst, you, whilst you were talking, I decided to end the turn. And oh, look! Here comes the automata. Ah, yes. So we have our first sight. They, they've gone, also got to the basic troops, who are the Mattox, mm -hmm. um, who are three naught six, very similar to our guys. Three naught six, the kind of the equivalent guys. So I don't really want to spend my AP, what is it, and in what essentially will be a dice off. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to win that. I, I think you get out of there, to be honest. Uh, so I'm going to go and hide in that forest for a bit to give myself uh, some plus one attack and plus one defense if he comes to engage me. Mm -hmm. And also hides myself for people who are not next to me. Um, and Lodge Strike asks, um, is there a, basically is there any card play except deck building and drawing from said deck? I.e., can you dig it, ditch, dig into your graveyard to pull cards back into play and that sort that's, of thing? That's a really interesting question. Um, currently, uh, currently no. Um, no, not for not for EA one. No, there's nothing. No, there. absolutely not. Um, but again, this is this is one of the reasons that we want to that we want to bring it to early access. You know, like feedback like that is really really fascinating because. Do people want to go back through that 
go back through that graveyard and pull out things that are particularly interesting. Maybe they do. Because so, th yeah. there, there are cards that let you go the other way. There are um, Delver Archivist cards that um, will let you go and pull a, a particular card out of your deck. Out of your deck, yeah, absolutely. Which are, which are wonderful. I, I very much appreciate them. Yeah, they are they are really really interesting because they sort of yeah they have that they have that ability where you know yes you're spending time on on doing these things and, and you know bringing resources in to, to kind of work with this stuff but at the same time it's giving you the flexibility of if you know that you've got a card that is absolutely crucial to mm. your strategy then you'll want to include you know something that allows you to delve into your deck because if you don't have access to it well you screwed really, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, long and short of it. Yep. Um, there is also the key other the key thing, which is uh, your heroes, when they get into combat and lose combat, aren't necessarily dead. Uh, they, there is a pursuit and evade mini game where they could go straight to the back to the top of your deck again yes. if you get, if you play well. It's a risky move. It's a risky move. And it's based on fate, effectively. So yes. uh, whether or not they escape is, you know, you'll, 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 you'll be thinking, well, do I want to save my fate for that? Do I want to use it to, to minimize the amount of damage I'm going to take? Do I want it yep. to, you know, be more aggressive? Lots yep. of stuff. Um, if Thurlan, as, as Thurlan says, yeah, we are going through stealth and assassination in the first major update yes. inside early access. And yeah, this is what kind of why we're in early access is that um, something like that, which is a major game changing element, will probably be horribly unbalanced at first effect, mm -hmm. which is quite how we're hoping to people give us feedback and help us evolve yeah. and change the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so obviously, you know, we've got we've got our top designers on it, and and you know, we we've got a really really great. Having, having knowing how stealth works, like I'm seeing it and going, yeah, this is this is going to be really really cool. But obviously, you know, this game's development. It's always there's always going to be something that, you know, when it's out in the wild, you think, oh, okay, that doesn't quite work in that way. Yeah. So um, back in the game, I'm slightly concerned because I've lost two initiative rolls in a row, and this Matic is moving towards my base. Yeah. He can't see it yet because I think he's only got one visibility radius. Yeah. So he hasn't found it, but he is moving that way. So I'm going to actually start putting a couple of units into my yeah, base. Would, did you leave it undefended? I did, because there's no stealth units. I can see them coming. <sighs> okay, fair enough. There you go. So that's a decent army. And next turn, I think, if I get a hero, nope. Nope. I'll, I'll get a hero in there at some point. Where's, so where's your hero at the moment? He's up here. He's just built a collector. Okay. And so I've got a good income of power now. Yeah. Which I've got a few things that need power, which is good, but I might actually use that to try and win the initiative roll next turn. Mm. So I'm going to end up, and then yeah, I'm going to buy a couple of initiative dice. Okay. Because I don't really have the need for power at the moment, but I do have the need for the action points. Yeah. So I bought two action two extra dice. So I've got five against three. It's not a guarantee though. It's still a random roll. Yep, it is. Obviously, if you lose, which mm. you haven't, thank goodness, but yes. if you do lose, then you get your resources back, because we can't punish you like that. We don't want to punish you too. Yeah, too it's, it's, basically, it's, 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 a, it's a gamble that you, only that you only pay if you win. Yes. But it is, but however, you do win, so you've got to be ready to accept the payment. <laughs> so there you go. So I've lost two resources, but I've got plus three a turn now because of this collector. So I'm doing okay money-wise, and he's mm. kind of stuck there because I get to go first. Yep. So I'm going to hit the deck. There we nice. go. Hello, Sable. Nice. So I'm going to get these guys into a new army. And what, where do you want to go? Ooh, uh, do you want to call him? I'm going to pay tribute to one of our commenters and have illogical strike. Nice. Nice. Um, he's going to move out and face up to these guys. Because he's got his thing. He has. He gets three movements because of our. Actually, I'm going to stop that and show you that. And that our wonderful Iron John Crawler comes with mount up. So he's basically an APC giving three movement points to anyone, which I think is a wonderful game changer. Just yep. when people think you can't get to them. Yep, it makes really slow. You know, it can make really slow units really quite fast. So obviously you're going preparing to go into engagements. Yes. Uh, there is the option to auto resolve. So for example, in this situation, uh, you know, sometimes obviously if you, were, if you weren't streaming this in front of uh, yes. 19, I probably would click auto resolve. Yes, because I'm yeah, gonna yes. win. I'm gonna yeah, win. Exactly. But you can just go straight in yep. uh, by clicking engage. So. Here we go. Then we come to the turn-based tactical battle screen. Mm -hmm. So, so placing these units, we want to do. So you've got you've got two layers effectively. There's the front. There's the front row. There's the back row. Uh, back row units don't 
immediately attack. Some of them do, some of them got slightly more range, but by and large, unless they're like generally, super, super you want powerful. Your, yeah, generally you want your support units, your artillery and any other yeah. thing like that on the back row where they can't be immediately shot at. Yes, definitely. They can't obviously they can't immediately shoot, shoot up unless they're artillery where they can. And then you put your grunts up front ready to kick ass. Mm -hmm. Now, I do like my Wormbane Huskies because they have this shock attack ability. Mm -hmm. Which basically means if I if I get the initiative and get to go first in combat, I get to knock someone out, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. So initiative roll again, uh, combat this time. Uh, basically, bigger armies have less chance of going first, but the attacker gets a bonus in the first round. Mm -hmm. So I got uh, a ten against ten against ten. Uh, so I got an eight, he got a six, so I get to go first. So these poor little Mattox here, who aren't very interesting, um, are going to get pushed in, punched in the face. Yes, that's uh, poor little Max, basically. Um, obviously, you can on at this point, uh, if you want to. You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a, a nice little glow there. You can spend fate to immediately up the number of guaranteed hits that will go through. So obviously, yep. your Mattox has got zero uh, defense, so there's yep. no roll to actually save any damage coming off of them. Um, so you know we can we can put in uh, this, this, this situation. I'm basically going to go for a full-on alpha strike and just oh, absolutely, yeah. lob in there, get four damage done. Yep. He doesn't get to move. He doesn't get a go. These guys, sadly, all they can do is uh, give a bit of infantry support. It doesn't yep. really help should, me this turn. Should have done. Should have done that one first. Nah. Yeah, do infantry. You doing? No, I'll do infantry support this time. Yeah, there you go. Great. There you pops go. damage. Brilliant. That's, That's what we want. So now because I'm going second, I'm going to infantry for support the guy. <laughs> So it's uh, six dice against naught, only to do two, 66% chance of getting that. Should be good. There we go, bang on the money. I'm nice. not even going to bother spending the fate, I'm just going to punch him in the face. Nice. And there we go. Some lovely face punching uh, there. So a victory for Logistrike. Strike, good work. Well done Logistrike. Strike. And we move forward, and that's him done with. So, right, and calm down. Yes, what were no, we doing? it's okay now, because basically yes. the Matics are not coming for you. No, they're not. So we've I mean, got they, are, they clearly are, somewhere. Yes. So the one thing I'm slightly worried about, we've got a decent secure thing. You can see this at the top of the map here, this is the bottom map here, because it's a small map, so it's very much about a quick punch to the face. Yeah. Um, so, but I've got a bit of invisibility here, so I'm going to take these guys and put them on the hill. Oh, and hello, that's why I yeah. put them on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the prime detachment here, and these guys got heroes, they've got recon, and they've got yeah. a big rail gun. These guys that's, are nasty. That's going to cause some uh, they've real got, problems for you. These guys can sit in the back row and pound away, so I don't really want to engage them. And importantly, you've got Beckon here, who has the archivist-ish uh, skill that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Um uh, but Kappa Wardens, they're not quick, they're only little scout uh, wolves, so I'm not worried about them, I'm worried about this guy. Mm -hmm. But not much I can do about it, I've only got one AP left, so let's see if, let's see what we... Take yeah. your licks. Nope. Oh, okay. New outpost. Interesting. So they'd move to secure the centre. Uh, do I want the resources, or do I want the thing? I think I want the resources, because I want to get these uh, artillery and tanks into play, so I'm going to push my luck and roll the dice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see what happens. Ah, and he's gonna crush me. Yeah, you're gonna get absolutely demolished. I do have a one defense, so I get, I've got a chance. I'm three one six against. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try. I might be able to take out his uh, uh, wolf, so so we'll give, yeah. give that a go. So when you in, when you actually actively engage, instead of auto resolving, when you engage, you're basically you've got you've got a slightly slightly better odds of causing more damage. Basically, auto resolving is like. You know, if you're at seventy-five percent and the enemy's at twenty-five, yeah, pretty much you're well, pretty much you're guaranteed to win. Uh, um, yeah, the, the dice would have to go particularly in my favour for me to get away from really this. Really badly for, uh, for you, um, but um, you know you're sort of working at okay, you know, okay levels. But if you're like, actually, I might go and engage these guys and yep. take out the one unit that I really want to take out. Oh, hello! I might actually have a chance here. So I can oh. move. He uh, he bummed out on his wolves, and I've got and I've got the initiative for the second round. Okay. So I actually have a chance to get rid of one of his units. Yeah. Um, need two dice. Oh, victory! Well, as much of victory as I'm going to get from this one, because I'm about to get smashed in the face by six. Oh, oh, no, we'll... oh! I get around. No, I'm dead. See, he used his fate. The AI wasn't going to kill me, but he rolled his fate dice and smashed me in the face. Yep. But I'll take that. That's more than I expected to get out of that battle. I think you, you've performed. you performed valiantly. Yes. Um, they, you know, they uh, they don't, you know, they won't be sending any sort of Christmas cards home anytime soon, unfortunately. But uh, 
Unfortunately, we've then just hit a bit of a beta issue. Oh, there you go. So, oh, yes. This, okay, okay. Exciting times. Yep, so I've got to do a bit quick re reload. Chat away, Peter. Okay, <laughs> I'll chat away. Um, yes, so obviously uh, the game is uh, not available just yet. Uh, so we are uh, making sure that we, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of bug fixing stuff that we go through as any game development studio goes through. So um, that's why we're in this pre-release beta stuff that we're doing at the moment. But some of you... Are, are in at the moment and the feedback has been absolutely fantastic it's been really useful helping to move the the whole project forward and making basically you know a great game help make a great game um but uh yeah so what david's doing is resourcing the game yes uh, and uh yeah so um, do, you, do you want to talk about the uh, air update that's coming later on yeah sure okay so uh when we are so a little bit later on into the game, we're going to be bringing this concept of air units. So to begin with, your feet will pr pretty much always be firmly on the ground. Um, after that, we're going to be bringing in the ability to field these air units, you know, smash down all sorts of, uh, you know, go on bombing raids, you know, do all of these kinds of things. And what they do is they allow you to strike at the heart of your opponent really quickly. So you'll have noticed when you've been watching this that you know the play is it has it has this rhythm to it where you know you do some expanding first, you go and find some resources, and then you you know you build out and you and then you you take your people and you go and stomp across the uh, stomp across the land. When we're bringing in stealth, you know you've got to be really careful about this stuff. You've got to be super careful about units just coming in and absolutely murking you. Mm. And then when we're bringing in aircraft, we're bringing this idea that actually you're never quite safe. If, if you if you want to really focus early on in just grabbing aircraft and then sending them out on bombing runs, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, what you're what you're doing is diminishing any chance that you know if a matic you know a lone matics comes along and all you've been doing is aircraft, then obviously you're going to get your base taken. But yes, it's but, uh, but there is uh, a good chance that you've probably bombed him into ne into next week by that point. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and as you know, with with these updates come new cards, come new abilities, all of these all of these sorts of things. And as I said before, you know, you pay once, you get the thing. Uh, we're not really interested in nickel and diamond people. Um, uh, I've noticed that we've got Zach Blood in yes. the chat. Hello to you, Zach Blood. Uh, uh, really being useful by getting beta feedback from uh, yourself and other people who are in the chat at the moment. Do say hello if you're in the chat. By the way. Um, Lord Strike is saying, any more factions planned? That would be giving away all the time. Um, at the moment we're really focusing on getting two really great, really strong, really differently playing factions in there because we feel like you know you're gonna be able to do uh, your humans versus your humans, your robots versus your robots, and humans versus robots. There's gonna be really interesting things that come out of that sort of stuff. We're not saying no, mm -hmm. but that is definitely a thing where you know um, it, it, it's you know that's far and far far off into the distance and it's you know if we get enough feedback and people say oh it'd be really cool to do this sort of stuff um, then then fantastic one of the things I will I will totally give give this away uh, in the in one of the later updates in in this in this campaign mode there is a there is a there's going to be a there's going to be a really interesting character in there there's going to be a really interesting encounter and. If you're interested in how, you know, what, where potentially the, the, the game might go from there in terms of these additional units and factions and so forth, then, then there's something in the campaign for, for you to go, oh, okay, maybe it's this. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, so pay, like, do look forward to that. Yes, so we're back in the game. Uh, we've, we've managed to lose our combat, though, but that's okay. We know where they are, they're coming. Let's go and do something else instead. Yeah, let's go and do something else. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at this encounter over here. Okay. What's ah, uh, Maximon the Trader. So we can pay three power to gain two people. Um, <laughs> that's... So, so, so uh, it's Trader? Yes. Trader. Uh, okay, interesting, interesting. I think we probably need to put some quotes around Trader. Yes, so do, it, it, do, it, do it as in basically I'm a slave driver and I'll take your money <laughs> to take your energy off of you, yes. Uh, yeah. But I paid for it anyway because I need the, I need the population more yeah, than I need the energy. Well, yeah, yeah, no, this is no time for morals. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Thurlan uh, says uh, AE, of course, Army and Empires had an extensive upgrade system with two parts that allowed you to craft buffing cards and some quote unquote spells in the game. Will you implement something like that? Again, this is something that you know we're more than happy to, to get feedback on at the moment. It's not in uh, in uh, you know a launch early access or anything like that. But again, if that's something that you want to see more of, 
let us know like get involved in the community mm. it's, it's it's funny like as much as i i was talking with um a bunch of um went to a couple of like big games conference event things which mm -hmm. talked to a bunch of journalists and so forth and it was all really lovely and you know, they liked the game and that was good but one of the really interesting things was um when we were sort of t talking about you know feedback from community and how we, how we want to chat with people and that kind of thing and whenever i sort of said no we really we genuinely we, we really would like people to, to chat with us and help us shape the scope of the project and, and do all this sort of stuff all i get was like these these sort of like responses of really it's like no really this is this is this is a genuinely exciting thing we're actually excited about you know we're making a game ultimately i think people make games for the people that play them so i think it's only fair to have people who play them get back in touch with us and say mm -hmm. actually I think, I think this would be a really cool idea yeah um so i've i've, I've decided to come down this bottom bit and oh look they've uh, left an outpost unguarded that was rather silly of them and they've even got to leave one of the better better heroes inside mm -hmm. so i'm gonna have that yep do it and obviously that is a really great way of being super efficient with resources. Why bother? And this is one of the strategies I quite like. Why bother building outputs mm. when you can take somebody else's? Yes, like, indeed. That is, I mean, obviously it leaves you, it means that basically you have to have a really big army initially. You've basically got to, you've got, basically got to go out, find resources, build up a really big army, and then go hopefully find somebody. So there yes. are real drawbacks to it. But if, it, if you can pull it off, yep. you're just taking outposts and you're just wasting their resources because they've spent real, you know, really hard-earned current, uh, you know, effectively a sort of sort of gameplay currency. Yep. I say indeed, indeed, if I get there next year, you know, I'll get that, but I think you'll probably defend that one. Yeah. Um, but also, when you capture them, you don't get to use them the same turn. It still takes a turn to come in. So I was tr wanting to drop some nice guys in here, but sadly I can't. Yeah. Uh, after, I don't own it quite yet. Yeah. It's so let's, let's have some cards instead. Ooh, hello, Sister Nuffy. Nuffy, Nuffy, I don't know. Um, so, what do we need? We have a tanks that require three power and guns that need four power. I've got six, so I can afford to risk two, I think, on the AP roll. Go for and it. we win. Oh, four dice. There you go. Instantly. There we are. But obviously, you've used those resources. Yes, but and again, this turns into a wonderful cunning trick of because I won this if that round, I essentially get two rounds in a go. Yep. So I could go and take the outpost, but. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be kind on the AI and instead go and fight him okay. in the open because that sounds like much more fun. Yeah, that sounds sounds like a gentlemanly thing to do. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so Logic Strike saying, how long does a match take on a medium-sized map? So we're currently playing on a small map. Yeah. Um, and obviously these are you know it's a lengthy game. Um, uh, on a medium-sized map, I mean it really does depend on how on how sort of efficient and ruthless you are. Um, if you're good at scoping things out and you find the enemy base quickly, then you can really get to them fast and take them unawares. Um, but yeah, I mean, so on a small map, I mean, I, we're sort of playing this on the stream, just kind of leisure, at a leisurely pace, and we've been playing for you know 40 minutes. So yeah, they, they, they are they are medium is is a, is big, <laughs> and large is yeah, large you are sitting down and, and you are committing. Yes, which is, which is what we want. Yeah, so I'm, I've ended up in another battle. Um, I've got my worms. I've also got my Northwalk veterans, who I do like. My Northwalk veterans, mm -hmm. uh, steadfast, so they can't be uh, affected by any status effects. Uh, resolute, so if other people die, they get better. And iron will, so I can, if I really want to defend animals, I can. I do like them. They're very useful. Right, first attack, and again. Oh, it's these guys again. Ah, splendid. We should win this. <laughs> Uh, insta kill. Yeah, insta kill. <laughs> it's the best way. It's the best way. Yeah. Get, rid of, get rid of things early. The, the, one of the things I really do like to do is I like to. Because the thing with fate is if you know it's kind of going to go. Kind of going to go south, hmm. you want to hold on to some of that fate. Because if you, because hero units are, can be pretty expensive. Yep. So if you've, if you've really screwed yourself over. Then what you want to do is get into the battle, hold on to the fate, do as much damage as you possibly can, mm. and if you think it's really going to go go south, hold on to that oh. fate and use it in hero escape. Yep, going south like that indeed. Yes. Uh, but there you go. Yeah. Oh, sort of need eight dice. He has one dice. Need four hit points. Not bad odds. Not bad odds at all. One. Oh. Nope. Even I'm, I'm going to save the fate. I'm not going to spend that because it won't kill him, and I might need it to keep myself alive. Yeah. So I'll take a chip off him. But I get first shot. So I'm gonna buff. So I should survive, he can't kill me not in this turn. But I can protect myself. 
Oh! He's shooting oh. off my head. Oh, shoot me. Support unit. Don't want it. There we go. Oh, yeah, of course, enough. Too, yeah you can just shoot off the top of my units. Uh, okay. Of course, you'll, you'll notice that the heroes don't actively participate in those yes. battles. Obviously, they're, they, are, they are participating and they're actually helping you. But uh, they're not you know, fighting, not hand to hand or anything like that. And here we go, a little mini game. Uh, so I have one. He's trying to flee back to his uh, base deck. Um, he, uh, I have three dice. He has four dice. <gasps> and he won quite convincingly. Yeah. Well rolled, machine person. Because none of us have any fate left either. So he had to win that cleanly. Yep. But he's away, so he's, we'll see him again. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. it's obviously most efficient to get rid of those heroes as best as you possibly can within those yep. battles because again, once they're gone, yep. it really does, you know, at the moment there's no way of grabbing them back and they are individually named units. So yes. if you want a you specific thing, one. yeah, I mean if you've built a deck around somebody that's mm -hmm. going to be a real problem for you. Yes. Oh, hello. I like my shield generators. That's quite useful and I've got to take another one. Uh, some mountain brothers, mountaineers, useful as well. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes uh, some maps more useful than others because obviously all these maps are procedurally generated. Mm -hmm. yep. So this one's quite a nice open one, a bit of forest over here, but generally quite a plainsy one. But I've played on maps which have been just mountain hell, oh, yeah, mountain. where the valleys are really full. And, and if you've got mountaineers, like mm -hmm. they're not the most effective things in battle. They're, 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 they're fine, but they're not amazing. But just the very fact that if you can walk over a mountain, and your opponent has to go around it. You know, again, you can immediately see the, the options for tactical possibilities there. Of if they're wandering away, mm. and you're able to just sneak straight in, it's yep. going to take them a huge amount of time to get back to you. Yep. And also, if it, one of those things, they don't come with they're only three, not six. But put them on a hill, and they get plus one, plus one from defense from the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not. They're not worth tangling with just on their own. No, definitely so not. There you go. He's got to band that up post as but he would. So John Fiend says, I like the hero escape mechanic. Well, thank you very much, John Fiend. Um, I, we like the escape me mechanic as well. Um, I, I feel like it adds this additional layer of meta strategy. Uh, what I really like about our game is we... You know, oh, he's back. The, there we go. He, yeah, there he is. <laughs> so he's got, there is meta to it. There's, mm. there's this idea of, you know, you're going to want to think about these strategies. not simply a case of, I know that these units are always going to be the best, therefore I will, you know, speed run to the tank, or whatever mm. it is. It's, it's a, actually units have, you know, specific cases where they are absolutely, you know, unstoppable. Yep. So uh, you've not come up against any Neobots yet, which is useful for you because, oh, they actually, are. yeah, just about to, there you go, speak of the devil. Now, the Neobots here, what, it, it, okay, so here's a tip. So with the Neobots, what you really want to do is get a fair number of them into it mm. all at once because the Neobots essentially buff one another. So once a Neobot gets killed, the other Neobots will go, oh, I'm not happy about that, and will amp up their abilities to yeah. actually strike you back. I've, I've, so, I've, I've, I've went playtesting before, I've had a full, a full front row of five of them. Yeah. They, they did a lot of damage. Yes, they do a whole bunch of damage. And then you get into this horrible situation where, you know, if you're running up, running up against a bunch of Neobots, you really have to super strongly consider what, what you're going to start taking out first. Mm. Because you could just, because, you know, the, the, the sort of beginner player will just go, oh, I'll just take away these Neobots because they're really easy to, to, to get rid of. But the more you take away from them, the more they're buffing everything. Yep. So, so what you want to really be doing is, is going for the things that, you know, if you can reach the back row, then you want to reach the back row and get rid of the stuff that's just, you know, like bombing you. Or, you know, something that's really, really heavy. So that the Neobots kind of, you know, they nip away at your claws but aren't doing anything. But if you start taking those Neobots out, you're, yeah, I mean, you're really, really asking for trouble. So we've actually got, kind of got a, two choices here. We can go for his base, which is home base, where he has a couple of units. Um, but he gets the bonus from being at the garrison in his base. Mm -hmm. Or we can go and take away this central outpost. Yeah. Now, so, I'm, I'm, these guys probably uh, they probably would win the main base, but I don't particularly want to risk it. And also, I like dominating. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to go and uh, use Twitch Team Alpha here. Lovely stuff. Um, um, I just want to say a hello to every single person who's in the chat. I want to say a specific hello to Caffeine Dreamer, who uh, is an ex-cohort of mine <laughs> and major jerk and troll on Twitch. So, uh, hello to you, Danny. Um, but, uh, yes. So, um, but yes, hi to everybody in the chat. Wanna, yeah, like, it's been really great getting your questions and feedback so far. It's been, 
I, I, I was, I, we were talking about this earlier, right at the start of the stream, actually. Like, I was, I'm, I'm, I've been a little bit like, been thinking about this all day, like a little bit apprehensive because it's, you know, it's like the, it's like your, your kids' first day at school. You know, you know they're going to do great, but you're a little bit sort of, like, oh, you know, is it going to be okay? Are they going to, are they going to, you know, make sure that they remember their lunch and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's been really good, and you guys have been really super friendly, and the questions have been really, really great. Yes. So uh, yeah, thank you for those so far. So we've got into combat here, so we've got our usual uh, our absolve skirmishes, so actually, I think actually the ones we started with. Mm -hmm. um, so they're out there, uh, but then we have our uh, Outrider Roller, who's a heavy. Uh, generally he's a 4-1-7, but because our hero has a tanker skill, he's actually a 6-1-7. Mm -hmm. And he better has a flanker skill here, so if I can get, get a... An enemy unit adjacent, he gets eight one seven. Yep. So he's going to do some killing. Bikes, um, bikes, bikes. I, so our, our our lead designer uh, on the project really favours having at least one army built almost entirely out of bikes. Very good. And it's 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 devastating. But the the best thing about it is that you know if you can figure out when it's coming, yep. you know when it's coming. And <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and there are there are telltale strategies of oh right, yeah, okay, I think I know that that's going to be the, yep. the the bike unit. I think it's safe to say this battle's going my way. No, I think you're doing quite well here. Oh, hello. Where'd that come from? Oh, what was that? Uh, that was a big old three punch from the Mattox. But they're about to take eight dice to the face. Okay. It's never good to three. take dice to the face. Well, they've only got one fate though. That's the problem with uh, this hero. He's only he hasn't got much fate. So I'm actually going to save it mm -hmm. and use use this killing blow. Mm -hmm. And come on, absorb skirmishes. Two, two or three, please. Two or three. Oh, not enough. No. Nope. So okay. I might get punched in the face. I might not. Let's see. Here we go. Face punch. Ah, oh, we survived. No fate. Fate, you cruel mistress. Mm. Oh well, we're still gonna win. Um. So yeah, there's a comment uh, in the chat about the graphics and the art style and that kind of stuff. Um. Yeah. It's so the 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 term is low poly. Um, and the idea is that, you know, we were kind of going for, in a visual style, we were kind of going for the best looking game of tabletop miniatures that was never made. You know, like, mm. we're, we're kind of going for that That's really stylish, right? futuristic, but, you know, uh, you know, still very much, still very much a video game, but yeah, really great looking uh, models. And um, yeah, I'm I'm super super pleased with like with the art team and how it all turned out. And um, we've got some amazing stuff. Like one of my one of my favourite models in the game actually is uh, an automata uh, hero called Penelope One. Oh, I do like Penelope One. Yes, Penelope One is fantastic. And um, like just the model for it is just so. There's something incredibly creepy about it. Also, really. Yes, like strangely, it's one of the most human-looking of the Ultimate mm. characters. And so, also, uh, it comes comes with the archivist skill, so I particularly like it. That's my favourite yes. skill by a long way. Yes, list. absolutely, absolutely. So we're, where we are at the moment, is I'm pretty sure we're dominant. Um, his base is oh, yeah. under threat here. We're going first. We've got a decent-sized army here. We could probably go and kill him with, um, mm -hmm. but we've got enough AP for me to go and be sure. So I'm going to roll these guys out over here just to check. Yeah, no one up here. I think we're pretty safe, so I'm going to lob in a shield okay. generator here because I like shield generators as well. Yeah, they're really useful. I mean, seven AP. To put them up front, but uh... but fantastic behind. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so it's going to cost me one, two, three, four, four AP to deploy them. So I can't afford to whack my absorber draft guns in here as well. If I did, that, I won't be able to attack this turn. I haven't made that mistake before. Um, so in we go. Let's go and kill some bots. Yeah. And we'll win this, I think. Yeah. Uh, Thurlon likes Armageddon and Android Empires. That's, that's good, sir. Armageddon and Empires is a lovely game. We have no denying it. But Very I think, nice game. I think everyone would be quite disappointed if we suddenly just basically put their cards in game. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, disappointed. Uh, Accusatory, this. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, as, you know, I th it's, you know, it's not been a, you know, we've made no qualms about it. You know, it, it's definitely a game that we looked to and went, oh, that, was, that was a really cool game. Mm. And it's certainly inspired, uh, you know, uh, the games forward movement. But uh, funnily enough, there's other games that have inspired it that have come from lots of different places that you wouldn't necessarily think about. The, you know, the team here at Oric Digital, we're, you know, we're based in Bristol in the UK, and we, you know, you know, eat, sleep, breathe video games, strategy games, card games. Like this is the stuff that we're into, and obviously our inspirations come from so many different places. Um, but yeah, so we're so we're. This is we're we're super pleased with this at the moment. We're super pleased with how this turned out. 
So I just managed to roll a naught with a seven attacker, but I have seven fate points. That's mm-hmm. a wonderful thing about Sabal. He's actually not got that much, not much in the way of attacking skills, but he comes with a lot of fate. Yeah, he's he's somebody who who if you're in a pinch, he's the person that you want to go to. Yeah. I think he's got has he got ten command or something? Oh, he does. Yes, he's the biggest army. He can wield the biggest army as well. Yeah. So he, I mean, you know, so it does cost action points to wield bigger armies. Like, mm. you know, if you've got a really just absolutely hulking great army, then it's gonna cost you a lot to get them across the map. Yep. But once they get there, you know, you know, Cybelt's really, really useful for either having a really small unit, that are, that are a small set of very, very powerful units, mm-hmm. um, and using up that fate to really, really quickly uh, demolish an opponent, a much bigger opponent. Or Cybelt's really useful for taking a massive arm and just stomping towards mm. the end of the base. Because, you know, when you've got 10 units, you really are, and you know, they're decent stuff in there. But the you... pro- problem being is that, uh, of course, each unit in your army costs you an AP to move. Absolutely. So Absolutely. If you, you don't want to be losing your AP roll yeah. if you've got yeah. a big, big ass unit like that, because it's not going anywhere. So you really, you know, that sort of strategy is really late game. That is a, you know, you've got the resources to, to put it into your initiative. You've got the ability to move this sort of stuff. Your 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 defenses are solid. You know what you're doing, and yeah. then you just start walking. And at that point, your enemy should be really scared. Yeah. And I'm going to go and win this game. Brilliant. Do it. Have it in the face. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, <laughs> see? Zero attack. Uh, I'm not even going to bother fating it. I'm just going to take it on the chin. Yep. Yeah, and then take some neobots to the face. <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, as I say, like the game is coming to early access March 3rd. Yes, it's there we go. In your face, Neobots. There you go, look. Nice. Uh. Um, the Steam page is already up, so go and chuck that on your wish list. There's also two really fun videos if you haven't got enough from this stream. You can go and see a quick interview uh, with some of us. Yes. Uh, I'm not in it. Uh, but uh, it was before I joined, actually, before I joined the company. Um, but, uh, it was the a other dark one, time. It, it was a very dark time. It was a very dark time. Yes. Um, and then the other one kind of walks you through some of the basics of the of, of the sort of map-based strategy movement stuff. doesn't quite uh, talk about combat. That's, that's going to be another video. Um, but, yeah, go hit uh, chuck that onto your wish list. And we really do genuinely want uh, lots of gr- uh, you know really fascinating feedback from you people. So, uh, yeah, jump into yep. the forums. Let us know what you think cool. and what you want from it going forward. Fine, so there you go. So that's, that's where we're at. So this is um, essentially version 0.21, so we're still in closed beta, and mm-hmm. we're still taking sign-ups. Um, I believe I'm going to be adding in some more people um, yes. tomorrow, I think, now we, that the new version's out. And in fact, uh, is it okay for us to, to, to reveal? I think it's okay for us to reveal this. The, uh, if you're in the beta group, this the next beta that you'll get will be the first access to the multi Yes. So that, that, that's out there with people who are in there, and they'll add so many people tomorrow. So a bit of multiplayer mayhem. So it'll be wonderful. Mm. So there you go. So there is Last Days of Old oh, Earth. Well, oh, that was lovely. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Thank you for coming on and joining us. Oh. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Right. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for everybody in the chat. Uh, thank you for all your questions. Um, Lodge Strike, you've been wonderful. Thurn, you've been fantastic. Saracen, lovely. Zach Blood, amazing. Cappy Dreamer, <laughs> Jerk. But that's fine. That's fine. He's. Uh, no, no, not everyone can be lovely. <laughs> Especially not my friends. No, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what it is. Brilliant. Cool, cool. Uh, thank you for your time, everybody. And uh, we'll hopefully look to see you in the beta. Thank you very much. And good Cheers. night. Bye.